In this video, we're going to work with Docker. Docker is considered containerization software, kind of like VirtualBox. Uh, we'll be creating virtual machines. In this case, uh, I'm on Amazon Web Services, but whatever your platform is, you're going to need uh, uh, Ubuntu image. This is 20.04. It really shouldn't matter long as we have some kind of Linux command line going on. So because I'm on Amazon, I'm going to do my app to update real quick. So I need to take care of that. And we're going to do uh, an apt install docker.io. So that's the install that we have to do to get Docker to run. See, it's kind of big there. I'm going to pause the video while we get that installed. So once we have that, we're going to pull an image. There's a repository of Docker images that are online that you can utilize for all kinds of things. And we're going to do the first one, which is just a, it's a hello world Docker that kind of demonstrates how Docker works. So I'm going to do a Docker pull hello hyphen world. It'll go through and give me a hash for that. It'll tell me that it's pulled down hello world colon latest and a lot of times when we look on uh, docker hub and we will there are different versions that you can pull in a lot of times the colon latest is the one that you're going to want for any given image so let's go ahead and do a uh, docker run hello world and you can see that it says hello from docker and it prints a message now, here's the thing about Docker. Um, when you have a Docker image, it will have what's called an entry point command. And in this case, it was probably just something like an echo command. And once that command finishes running, the Docker terminates. So a lot of times, most of the time, you're going to want Docker's, for example, let's say you have a Minecraft server, you're going to want that running all the time. So you're going to want to put your Docker's into daemon mode. Uh, you're going to want them to continually run so they don't uh, sort of execute that entry point command and then quit like this one did. So we'll be getting to that. My, my point here is this hello world docker just ran and quit. And we can do a docker and then a ps hyphen a, which will give us a process list of docker images uh, that we've run here. And we can see a couple of things when we do our docker psa. Uh, it'll tell us what that entry point command was. So we know somewhere on that Docker, it ran something called hello. Probably has an echo command in there. The image we pulled was hello world. It was created a minute ago, and then it exited a minute ago. So this one started and then quit. It is not currently running. It's not listening on any ports, and we don't have any ports mapped to this machine. We'll be doing that. We'll be mapping listening ports on our Docker to listening ports on the machine. And it auto assigned it a name that we can sort of utilize to uh, sort of reference this container here. And this container was called uh, Strange Blackburn. So when you run Docker PSA, it's important to know what those are. And I find that when we create Dockers, you create them, it's good to give them your own name. It gave us the strange underscore Blackburn. When you um, run a Docker image, Um, you can give it a name that's more descriptive that you'll remember. If not, it will auto-assign a couple of different words like that. Another command that's important for information is Docker Images. All right, misspelled that. And if we run Docker Images, we can see what images we have on our local machine here. And we can see we have an image called Hello World. Okay. One of the things that I like to emphasize early in the unit is there's a difference between an image in a container. So an image is sort of like the operating system on disk and the container is something that is run from that. So I'll do a docker ps hyphen a. You can see that we have one container here that was run from an image. I'm going to do a docker run hello world again. We're going to see that that gets run and I'll do a docker ps a and you can see that now we have two containers that were created, right? So this base image here, hello world, 
was used to create a container that started and then quit. And then it was used to create another container that was started and then quit. So we have two containers that were based off of that initial hello world image. So you can run images and when you do Docker run, it will look at an image and it will create a container. Important concept. Now we can start containers. I can do Docker start, you know, strange underscore Blackburn. And it'll start that container, but because the entry point command has already run, it's not going to do anything. So essentially we just tried to start that container, but it's already done what it's needed to do and then it, it uh, it's already exited. Now this has a lot of benefit to it because if we have an image called hello world, let's say this hello world is running a web server and we start a container called strange blackburn from that. Now if we know that image is clean and that image does not have any viruses on it or anything, if we leave strange blackburn running for a period of time and somebody were to get in and compromise it, if we were to stop this container and then start a new container from hello world, any changes that someone may have made to our container um, don't affect that base image on disk. So that's uh, that's a key benefit um, to running containers is from images is that the images aren't affected by what happens within the container. Now as we're running containers, we're going to uh, sort of start to populate this list and this list is going to get kind of long here. So we can erase containers by doing docker rm and I can do strange blackburn. All right, if I do a docker psa, we can see that that container is no longer on the system. I'll do that again. I'll do a docker rm objective chatelet maybe looks French say that much now if I do a docker ps hyphen a you can see that we have nothing left but we still have our image right so I can run docker images and we still have that hello world image that we can run containers from and if we want to delete that I can do a docker image rm hello world and now if I do a Docker images, we are back to square one. So we talked about a couple of different things here. We can do a Docker pull. We'll look at that in more depth in the next video. This will pull an image from Docker Hub. We can do a Docker run, and this will start a container from an image. We can do a Docker start, and that will start a container that has stopped. And there are times when that's going to work. We covered Docker RM, which will delete a container. And Docker Images RM, which will delete an image.